All right. Um, have a travel announcement to make. Um, the Secretary General will be arriving in Geneva Monday evening, where he will take part the following day on the International Conference on Climate Resilient Pakistan. The conference is being co hosted by the government. The conference aims to generate financial and international support to those impacted by last year's devastating floods in Pakistan and to rebuild damaged infrastructure in a climate resilient manner. In his remarks to the conference, the Secretary General will call for support to strengthen the resilience of the communities in Pakistan for the future. While in Geneva, scheduled to hold a joint press conference with the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Shabazz Sharif. Uh, you'll be able to follow that live on uh, the webcast, but it will be early morning in New York. Uh, and the Secretary General will then fly back to uh, New York from Geneva, and he will be back here on the evening of the 9th of January. Senior personnel announcement to share with you. Uh, today, the Secretary General is appointing Lieutenant General Otavio Rodriguez de Miranda Fio of Brazil as the new force commander for the UN peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He succeeds Lieutenant General Marco uh, da Sa Afonso da Costa, also of Brazil, to whom the Secretary General is deeply grateful for his important contributions and to the service of the UN peacekeeping in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, Lieutenant General Miranda Fio has several years of experience in command and control structures in the Brazilian Army. More information online. And I have a few peacekeeping updates to share with you uh, from our various missions. First, in the DRC, the UN peacekeeping mission in the DRC is telling us that its Force Intervention Brigade has launched a joint operation with the Congolese Army. The operation aims to bolster ongoing efforts to protect civilians and to neutralize armed groups in the areas along the Beni Simulike Kamango Nobil Axis in North Kivu. The UN peacekeepers are also undertaking patrols along that axis to improve security, to allow freedom of movement of the population and security forces, and to help with the return of internally displaced people. Uh, just north of that, in the Central African Republic, uh, UN peacekeepers there have also concluded a joint mission with the Central African Security Forces to better protect people in the country's west. Over a period of one month, peacekeepers conducted over 100 patrols and 30 aerial surveillance missions. They patrol several localities, including Bosangoa, uh, Nanabakasa, Marcunda, and Pawa. Military peacekeepers, also accompanied uh, by civilian colleagues, provided medical services, distributed school equipment, and shared information about the threats of improvised explosive devices. Overall, the past week, UN peacekeepers carried out over 1,800 patrols to engage the population and better understand their concerns. This included long-range patrols in the east as well as the central region. Meanwhile, uh, as part of our support, provided security by escorting personnel from the National Election Authority in the Wampende Prefecture. Um, our peacekeeping mission in Abye, uh, otherwise known as UNISFA, has responded uh, rapidly to quell violence in the village of Rumamur in, in the southern part of Abye after an early morning attack that took place today it resulted in 13 people being killed, five injured, and 27 homes being burned to the ground. UNISFA reports that an armed group of approximately 200 cattle herders were responsible for the violence. Peacekeepers deployed immediately to provide physical protection to the villagers and are continuing to patrol the area to prevent further attacks and facilitate the safe return of civilians who fled. The mission has also launched an investigation into the incident. The acting head of the peacekeeping mission, Brigadier General Abu Siad Mahmoud Bakir, strongly condemned the attack and called on all stakeholders to end violence and fully engage in the peace uh, process. Just south of that, in South Sudan, our peacekeeping mission there, UNMIS is continuing, to, is continuing to respond to the volatile security situation in the great, greater Pibor administrative area and Jongle following violence that began late in December, with the most recent clashes impacting communities in Likwagonle. Uh, UNMIS is working with local authorities and faith-based leaders to encourage armed youth to return to their places of origin. 
Its human rights team is also investigating violations committed during the clashes and advocating for the release of abducted women and children. UNMISS leadership is working with national and state authorities to help de-escalate tensions in Jongle, as well as Upper Nile State, where the mission is convening an important peace conference between Ware and Shiluk uh, people. A uh, quick humanitarian update, this one from, um, from Mali. Uh, Martin Griffiths, our head of humanitarian affairs, has allocated $7 million from the Central Emergency Response Fund to support people impacted by insecurity in the country's north. The funds will help provide life-saving assistance to 423,000 people, including internally displaced people, refugees, and host communities in the Gao, Kidal, and Mopti regions. The new allocation will support uh, projects for education and protection, as well as areas of health, water, uh, hygiene, shelter, and psycho uh, psychological assistance. If you, uh, as you are aware, humanitarian needs in Mali are dire, as the country faces a multidimensional crisis. This year, humanitarian needs, um, humanitarians will need $868 million to help 6.2 million people. Uh, just two more quick notes. In his message for the new year, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, is calling on the release of people in prison for exercising their human rights. As we begin the year, it will mark 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Mr. Turk is asking governments and all detaining authorities globally to amnesty, pardon, and simply release all those detained for exercising their right and to end arbitrary detention once and for all. And today is World Braille Day, celebrated since 2019. The day aims to raise awareness for the importance of Braille in the context of education, freedom of expression and opinion, as well as social inclusion, as reflected in Article 2 of the Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. James. Yes, can I ask, um, first, the Security Council is going to have a meeting tomorrow mm -hmm. on the situation um, in uh, the Middle East, um, following the developments that we talked about at yesterday's press briefing, the visit by Israel's new national security minister to the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, and with some of the statements that you know that President Netanyahu, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has made. Um, what is the UN doing on the ground diplomatically, and what is your reaction to the Security Council meeting? Well, I mean, if the Security Council has a meeting, we're asked to brief. We will, of course, uh, Who will pro be briefing? provide a briefer. I checked with my colleagues about two hours ago. We still, uh, we still didn't have clarity, uh, but we'll have we will have someone. Um, as far as I understand, contacts, uh, working level contacts with uh, between our UNSCO colleagues and the Israeli government is continuing, but nothing. Mr. Wenersland is involved in these contacts. Is he in position on post? Uh, he will be, I think, back uh, in um, in Jerusalem uh, tomorrow very quickly. Surely very he shouldn't be on holiday at a time <laughs> like this. I mean, I mean, he seems to be missing in action. We've been, we've been looking through his website. He, he hasn't, there's no statement on his website since the 10th of October. The last thing he tweeted was December the 29th congratulating President Netanyahu. Does he still congratulate President Netanyahu when he's heard some of the comments he's made about, well, about I, settling land I, I, all I, across I, I Israel, don't, including I, 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 the occupied I, I, territories? James, I, I, I understand what you're uh, saying. Um, Mr. Venisland is not uh, missing in action. I know he's been in contacts uh, with his colleagues, and I said, on, he, as I said, he's on his way back, uh, uh, back to uh, to Jerusalem. Um, we will continue to. I mean, there's a new government in Israel. We will continue to interact there is with a them. New I, there is no, a new I, I, in James, 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 James let, me, let, let, let me let me let me let let me let me let let me finish. And we will continue to advocate for the same uh, the same ideals and the same goals as we've had in the past. And has the Secretary General had any contacts on this issue? Uh, on this issue, I, not, none that I can report. Uh, Deji, and then we'll go. Actually, uh, James asked some of my questions. So uh, I know I know um, the Farhan had already answered this question yesterday, but can you alliterate the position from the Secretary General on the uh, issue of the Alexa compound? I mean, I, I will repeat what. Mr. Hawk said yesterday, uh, Secretary General reiterates the importance of upholding the status quo in line with the special role of the Kingdom of Jordan, and he calls on all to refrain from steps that could escalate tensions in and around Jerusalem's holy sites. 
Okay, so uh, my question is, um, th there, there's, there's news from uh, Poland that the Polish government is seeking for the reparation of World War II from uh, Germany, and they said they might request a meeting with the UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, to discuss this very issue. Has the UN received any request from uh, the Polish we side? We have, Poland? as far as we checked a bit earlier this morning, we had not received any uh, written letters, at least through our the usual uh, uh, the usual channels, uh, but we'll check again. S uh, since this institution this institution is established after World War II, uh, does does the Secretary General had anything to say on this re reparation request? Not at this point, Madame. Merci. Uh, sur le Mali, the forty six. Ivorian soldier have been sentenced to 20 years in prison. The three women were sentenced to death, despite West African head of state urging Bamako to release them by January 1st or face sanction. I know, and I'm sure that the Secretary General might be deeply concerned about it, but can he do something? Is he doing something to get them we, released? We, uh, we're obviously extremely aware of this case. Uh, we have been uh, following it closely. We have been uh, in touch with many people uh, involved. Um, we remain uh, willing to provide any necessary support to ensure that the detained soldiers uh, return home. Um, I would also, since you mentioned the death penalty, it is worth reiterating our uh, absolute stand against the death penalty uh, anywhere. I have another question. Yeah, please. It's about uh, Olivier Salgado. Yes. Did he find a new job? Because it was not his fault when he was I'm fully fired. aware of Mr. Of, of the yeah, reasons. Yeah, but what happened I, I, to I'm him? I'm fully aware behind... Be I'm fully aware of the reasons uh, why Mr. Salgado was uh, asked uh, to leave. Uh, I'm not in the habit of uh, discussing personnel, private personnel issues from, from here. Um, Betul and then Abdelhamid. Um, thank you, Steph. I'm going to ask about Ukraine. Uh, the Turkish president is scheduled to talk to President Zelensky and the mm -hmm. Russian president, uh, Putin, today. And I'm just wondering if the SG has anything planned after uh, that phone call uh, between the three leaders takes place. Well, I, we have, uh, I think, throughout this war, uh, the President Erdogan, Turkish authorities have been... Uh, uh, very good about sharing uh, information from these phone calls, and I'm sure we will have c contact with the Turkish authorities afterwards. Uh, anything planned, uh, I, we will, uh, I will share with you what we get. Uh, I will share with you afterwards. I'm not, um, I, I don't know if there's anything specifically uh, planned. Abdul Hamid. Thank you, Steph. Happy New Year first. I have two questions. Let's hope. First, does Mr. Winsland need to be in place to issue a tweet or a statement? With, I, I think with we, such we have, okay. major development, he, uh, how can anyone justify his silence? That's one thing. That's my first okay. question. And my second, Israel bombed the airport in Syria on Monday morning, killing three people and closing, shutting down the airport. There was no statement or any comment on this development. I think uh, on Mr. Venisland, uh, we are reporting and we're continuing to report to the Security Council, and we continue to speak on this issue as Fahan did yesterday, and I, I'm, I did, I am doing again uh, today as as we speak on behalf of the Secretariat. Um, I have no. Uh, we, we keep seeing media reports of increased uh, violence in, in different parts of, uh, of Syria. We would like to see an end to that. Um, and we would like to see all the parties recommit uh, to the political efforts uh, led by Mr. Um, uh, oh, God, I've been on vacation. Um, Pedersen. Pedersen. <laughs> Please don't tell him that I blanked on his name. <laughs> But, but okay. the question wasn't about the 
I, I know, but I, we have no we have no forensic uh, information nor way of knowing who is attacking where. What we are seeing in Syria is that the violence is continuing from many quarters, and that's something we would like to see stopped. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so I'm not very good at the microphones. <laughs> it's my first of the year, so you, you, be, you beat me. You're, you're ahead of me. Hi, I'm uh, the new correspondent with RTE Irish Media. Hi. Hi, I'm, um, I wanted to ask a question about the, uh, what you just mentioned, the uh, High Commission of Human Rights, Volker Turk, mm -hmm. making a comment on uh, the calling for the release of all those arbitrarily detained. Um, will he be extending that uh, to include the detained Uyghurs of Xinjiang? Uh, as detailed in the uh, report by his predecessor, Michel Bachelet. Well, I, I think on his, it is clear on his statement, when he talks about people who are being arbitrarily detained, he means people arbitrarily detained around the world, full stop. Uh, there is no caveat uh, to that. On the issue of the, of the report and his follow-up, uh, how that proceeds, that's within his mandate. You should be asking them. Okay. Uh, James, you look, you look like you're itching. No. Well, I just, on the Ukrainian proposal uh -huh. at the end of the year for peace talks, yeah. has the Secretary General, General himself been engaged on that? Has he had any discussions with the Ukrainian Foreign Minister, with President Zelensky? Has he had any outreach over the festive period, the holiday period, yeah, he, uh, with he, the Russians? And has he been in touch with, with the Turks? Uh, he, you know, Secretary General has been... Um, while on, 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 on leave, uh, has had some, some contacts. Uh, he and I spoke uh, about it just before the, the new year, when the news broke. And what he said to me was very clear, is like he is always willing to mediate if both parties want him to mediate, which is, you know, in, in a sense, the, the, what he would say about any conflict uh, going around, uh, around the world, and I'm sure is the, uh, once he's back in New York, he will be more fully briefed uh, on on the issue. Abdel Hamid, and then Beitoul, and then I'll Thank you. Uh, go uh, before News this uh, say that uh, the Sudanese parties had reached some kind of agreement between the military component and two civilian groups. Do you have any details of that? Is the UN involved with this uh, new agreement? I, I will check. I will check. Uh, Steph, a question on Syria. We know that the Security Council started negotiations on renewing mm -hmm. the uh, cross-border aid mechanism mm -hmm. uh, into Syria, and if they can't uh, reach an agreement, uh, the mechanism will expire in less than a week. And as the Secretary General or uh, Martin Griffith's office have been informed about uh, the latest on the negotiations, and are you prepared if the mechanism is not renewed? Well, what happens? What happens is that millions of people will suffer. That's what will happen, right? We've been very clear on the need to extend the mechanism. Uh, the cross-line delivery of aid is very important, and we've been working on that through that as well, but that alone cannot meet the needs that we are meeting through the cross-border delivery of aid. Um, we, we have, of course, you know, we have contingency and plans for just about any situation, but uh, one cannot replace, um, the, the cross-line alone cannot do the work that it is doing with the cross-border. So what will happen is that people will suffer, full stop. Uh, Mr. Griffiths and our colleagues in humanitarian affairs are following this uh, closely, and we remain ready uh, and continue to engage with member states who may have questions and queries uh, on it. But at the end of the day, it is a Security Council um, decision, and I think Secretary General, Mr. Griffiths, and all have been extremely clear on the, the critical need to continue this. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm James Martone um, from Ashark. I just came. This is my Welcome. second this day. Is, Thank this you so is much. Like a, it's almost like September, like new, new, new kids in class. Welcome. 
I wanted to ask about Yemen. The, the U.S. envoy to, to Yemen just got back and said he was there advancing the U.N.-backed peace initiative, mm -hmm. initiative in Yemen, which leads me, has there been any talk between the U.N. and the U.S. peace envoy regarding Yemen? What's the latest in terms of the U.N.? UN well, we, we continue to, uh, to remain engaged uh, with all our interlocutors, whether it's um, Yemeni interlocutors, regional interlocutors, and of course, uh, US and others. While there's been no formal extension uh, of, the, um, of the cessation of hostilities, it's clear that we've also, thank God, not seen any major eruptions, and we've been able to see uh, civilian flights continue. We've been able to see uh, uh, resources going to Hodeida, um, even without a formal uh, extension. Uh, but we continue. Um, we continue our efforts uh, on that uh, on that road in in trying to make sure that the gains are solidified and we can move even further. Yes. Thank you, Stefan. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, Tehran announced it's pursuing dozens of uh, people it accuses of involvement in the killing of Qasem Soleimani, the general, Iranian general, and a lot of them are non-Iranians as well. Uh, and Iran has also vowed decisive response to the French magazine Charlie Hebdo for publishing a cartoon they find insulting of Khamenei. And 18,000 protesters remain in custody. Executions without due process are still being planned. And my question is, what is the UN doing diplomatically to deter the Islamic Republic from threatening is the international community and its own people? Okay, there's a lot in there. Um, we continue uh, to express the same opinion we've been expressing since the beginning of these demonstrations, which is uh, in ensuring that people have a right to demonstrate, have a right to demonstrate peacefully, encouraging uh, the government in Tehran to engage uh, with, with those people who have uh, legitimate uh, issues, especially concerning the rights of women uh, and girls. We're also these are messages that have been passed directly from the Secretary General to various uh, Iranian leaders, and we will continue uh, to do that. Uh, on the issue of Charlie Hebdo, I, frankly, I'm, I'm not aware of the particular details, but we continue to, to believe in, 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 the right of, uh, in, the, in the right of free speech and expression for journalists. The widespread uh, speculation in Iran, what they believe Iranians, what they believe is that condemnation from the UN is not going to stop the Islamic Republic and deter them from committing all these crimes. So is there anything other than words of condemnation that the UN is well, planning? Well, I, I mean, in terms of, of, you know, there are other parts of the UN that may, that may have act that have moved, whether it's the human rights, uh, the human rights, various human rights mechanisms. I can only speak for the Secretary General. Uh, you, you know as well as I do what the authority of the Secretary General is, which is enshrined in, 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 in the Charter. I, what I can tell you is that he has been making statements publicly, but he's also been engaging in closed-door discussions with various Iranian leaders at various points. Alan. I'm sorry. Thank you so much, Stefan. I have a question on Ukraine, please. Mm, uh, not so long time ago, former Chancellor Merkel twice said that mm, the Minsk agreements allowed to, quote, gain additional time for Ukraine to become stronger, end quote. And uh, after that, uh, former president of France, for François Hollande, just echoed this, this uh, statement, who was a broker of, the, broker of this uh, Minsk agreements as well. So I'm wondering, um, from the perspective of the SG, uh, to what extent did that these statements uh, reflect his uh, attitude to the Minsk agreements? That basically, I mean, the, the, such kind of words uh, might might be a sign that they they were not supposed to be implemented from the very beginning. I, I, you know, these are it's a very legitimate question, Alan. But I I will leave the the historical analysis to reporters. Uh, to former officials and to historians. Uh, we are very much focused on, on today and trying to uh, put an end uh, to this bloody war. Uh, 
we'll, l let me just come back to you. I'm just going to take a question online. Uh, uh, Oscar, I think you had a question. Okay, while Oscar connects, I will take your question. It's just a very quick question. As you know, Ireland has just stepped down from the Security Council. Um, what will the Secretary General miss most about the Irish on the Security Council? Um, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, there's so much I already miss about the Irish. Um, no, I think uh, Ireland, which as you said, just finished its term, uh, has shown um, what uh, clear and uh, forceful engagement on behalf of, of an elected member and, 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 and what the impact that can have on, on moving uh, issues forward um, and shown the importance of, um, of active leadership from the elected members. Okay, uh, Oscar going once, twice. A jugé vendu. All right, goodbye. See you tomorrow. Thank you. No Paulina until the 9th. What? Oh, it's a Monday. Uh,